Hello and welcome to the next in the series of lessons on architecture of the CPU designed around the new OCR J277 course. Today we're going to be looking at the CPU itself and the common features. So if we take a look here at what we need to learn for this topic, you can see that we're really going to be concentrating on this area here today. Common CPU components and their function. We'll take a look at this. We'll also mention the fetch, decode, execute cycle a little bit of detail as well, but we will spend some more time on that later on. This is where things get a little bit more technical. Uh, I think it also becomes more fun because you start learning a bit more of the details about what happens inside the computer. And this is something that I find really fascinating and I hope you do too. <laughs> serious? So hopefully we've got some experience with the CPU. Uh, this is an example of a Intel Core i7, a CPU for a lot of laptops and desktop computers. And as you can see, that just kind of slots into the motherboard and is sort of the brain of the computer. So what do we need to know about the CPU for this course? Well, we're going to have to learn the purpose of the CPU. And we're going to have to learn about some of the common components that you will find inside a CPU. Things like the control unit, the arithmetic logic unit, uh, cache memory, and registers. So these are all the kind of components that you would find on a, inside a typical CPU chip. And I'll just go through them one at a time. So the CPU, or the central processing unit, is sometimes referred to as the microprocessor or the processor. But all these terms basically mean the same thing. It's made up of billions of transistors, which are like examples of very, very small on-off switches. And the arrangement of these transistors creates logic circuits that can process data, carry out instructions, and control the components of the computer. The CPU's job is to process data, carry out instructions, and control the components of the computer. So while it's operating and carrying out billions of operations per second, essentially the computer is doing the following three things. It is fetching instructions from memory, what we call RAM, decoding those instructions, and executing those instructions. And this is a continuous cycle that we often refer to as the fetch, decode, execute cycle, or just the fetch, execute cycle. Uh, it's a more brief version. The instructions that are fetched, decoded, and executed all are provided by computer programs that people have written that tell the computer what to do. So we've got this idea, it fetches an instruction, it then decodes that instruction, and then it executes that instruction, and the cycle continues over and over again, millions, or in the case of modern CPUs, billions of times per second. So let's look at some of these common CPU components. The first one we're going to look at is the control unit. And the control unit coordinates the activity of the CPU. It does this by fetching and then decoding instructions from memory. It sends out signals to control how data moves around all the different parts of the CPU and memory in order to then execute those instructions. So again, it's controlling this whole fetch, decode, execute cycle. The control unit has quite a lot of functions. This is a very brief summary but that's basically what you need to know for this course. ALU, or Arithmetic Logic Unit, does exactly what it says on the tin. It carries out the calculations and logical decisions required by the program instructions that the CPU is processing. So it does all the arithmetic operations like add, subtract, multiply, and divide. But it also does the logical operations and comparisons, things like and, or, not, uh, less than, greater than, equal to, all those kind of things. And basically by putting all those calculations together, that's essentially how the computer carries out all the tasks that result in all the cool software and things that we use every day. Registers are discrete memory locations within the CPU designed to hold temporary data and instructions. The role in the CPU is to accept, store, and transfer data and instructions for immediate use by the CPU. These registers are used during the different stages of the fetch, decode, execute cycle. Registers are extremely fast, but they're very, very small. They're 
these discrete memory locations. A register holds one instruction. It holds one piece of data. So if you're adding two and two together, you need to work out the answer. Two is held in a register. The other two is held in a register, maybe. You put them together and the ALU does some arithmetic and that answer, that four that you get out of it, has to be held in a register. So each individual number, each individual little piece of data, each instruction has to be held in one of these registers before it can be executed. There are two general types of register that you need to know about. We've got specialist registers. These are registers that have specific control or data handling tasks to carry out. And we'll look at some of the more common ones in the next lesson. But you've also got general purpose registers. And these can be used by your program to hold intermediate results while working through a calculation or an algorithm. Another important CPU component that you need to know about is cache memory. So that's C-A-C-H-E, not C-A-S-H, that's very different. Cache memory is a small amount of very fast memory built into the CPU. It is used to store instructions or data that are either frequently used, have recently been used, or about to be used in the near future. Now, it's very easy to get cache memory and registers confused. CPUs must have registers. They hold the instructions and data that are being worked on right that very instant. Cache memory is like a temporary store. It's like a little buffer to hold some of these commonly used data and instructions so they can then be fed into the registers and executed quickly later on. So you can kind of see in this diagram here, it's kind of this in-between stage. You know, you use RAM to hold most of the data instructions, and it's all decoded and executed by the CPU, but we kind of just need to store it somewhere in the middle here just to have this store so that we can feed it to the CPU really quickly. So again, why do we need cache? It seems to be complicating things. Well, most data and programs currently in use are stored in RAM. But RAM is comparatively slow to access compared with the speed that your CPU operates at. It just takes time to go to RAM, find the data or instruction, and then move it back to the CPU. This means we have a kind of bottleneck that develops which can slow down the computer. Sometimes we refer to this as the von Neumann bottleneck, and we'll study von Neumann architecture a little bit in the next lesson. So it's faster to access instructions and data held in cache than in main memory or RAM because it's located on the CPU. It can be accessed really quickly. So it's just this temporary store of all the frequently used data and instructions just so your CPU can keep operating at close to 100% efficiency. So cache and registers are a little bit complicated. They're a little bit difficult to understand. They can seem very similar. The idea that registers are extremely small and they hold individual instructions and data used in the fetch to code execute cycle. Computers just can't work without registers. You must have them on the CPU in order for the computer to do this fetch to code execute cycle and do its job. But cache is larger. It holds megabytes of data, not just individual data and instructions. Holds commonly used or recently used instructions and data so they don't have to be continuously fetched from RAM, which is more slow. Having cache speeds up the performance of a computer, but it's not essential. And indeed, some older processors would have no cache memory, but that meant they would operate very, very slowly. So having a bit of cache really speeds up your processor. And more expensive processors like top-of-the-end Intel or uh, AMD Ryzen chips will have a lot more cache memory than the cheaper chips. And that's one of the reasons why they're faster, but also more expensive. Let's summarize today's lesson. The CPU's job is to process data, carry out instructions, and control the components of the computer. Key components that you need to know about inside the CPU include the control unit, which controls the activity of the CPU, the arithmetic and logic unit, which carries out all the calculations and logical decisions, registers, which are discrete memory locations within the CPU designed to hold temporary instructions and data, and your cache memory, which is a small amount of very fast memory built into the CPU, and it's used to hold frequently used data and instructions to kind of speed up the general operation of your computer. I hope that was helpful for you. If you've got any questions, please leave, if you've got any questions, please leave them in the comments, and I'll wish you a good day. Bye-bye.